Welcome to day six of Vlogmas. I was thinking about what I was going to film for today's video, and I ended up taking a nap. And now here it is, 9.50 at night, and I happened to see that Charlie Dorset, they released a video, a tag video. I started watching it, I got a few minutes in. And I looked at the questions for the tag, and I thought to myself, this would be a perfect thing to do for my video today. So, here I am. I have my phone set up that I record on. My computer is on behind the phone. So, if you see me looking off to the side over this way, it's because I'm reading the questions. I will have the questions down below in the description box. Okay. So... Question one, Santa Claus, if you could ask Santa for one thing off of your author bucket list, what would you ask for and why? I thought about this and I would ask Santa for a book formatting program that would work on a Windows PC for ebooks and paperbacks at the same time because that took a lot of time to format correctly. A lot of mistakes, a lot of trial and error. But like a really big thing off of my bucket list would probably be someone to design the book cover and the book blurb for me on the back. Because that took a few weeks to figure out how to do. Alright, question two is the ghost of Christmas past. What's one piece of advice you wish your past self knew about writing or what advice would you give to fellow aspiring writers? Don't give up. The book that I published and released at the end of October, I started and stopped writing that book so many times from when I was like 19 years old until now. If I would have just finished it and not given up and it would have been out in the world and I'd be a little bit further along in my writing career than I am now. So I would just say don't give up. Uh, question three elves. Santa has his little helpers. What resource has been the most uh, helpful to you or most invaluable to your writing process? Hmm. Resource. Hmm. Resource. Probably um, Grammarly has been the most helpful resource because even though I edit books um, freelance for people and when they write papers, it's a little bit different when you're editing your own stuff. I don't really use a lot of outsource, outside resources, I guess. And then other than Google Maps, because my books have real locations and I like to zoom in street level to see what's going on there. Um, number four, that's right, number four is gingerbread cookies. What is your favorite holiday treat? What is your main character's from your current work in progress favorite holiday treat? Hmm. Holiday treat. That? I'm stumped. Well, at Thanksgiving, I always like Thanksgiving pie. Mm, my main character will like brownies with vanilla ice cream on top. There's this uh, cookie bar I made one time. It had like M&M's and chocolate chips and coconut flakes. It was like a cookie mixture. I don't know what it was. I made it a long time ago. That was really good. Mm. Number five is holiday traditions. What is your favorite family tradition? What fictional character would you like to share that tradition with? Um... I don't know, we don't have a lot of family traditions, like on Christmas Eve, we uh, open one present on Christmas Eve, and then we don't start decorating for Christmas around the house until after my son's birthday, which is December 2nd. Um, a fictional character, I... Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, oh, the Ted Detective and the Women's Murder Mystery series. 
I would like to have her here because I like her as a character. Um, book number, or not book, question number six is Star of Bethlehem. What started your journey to write your first book? Has the journey turned out like you imagined? What would you like to see? Where would you like to see it go in the future? Let's see. Um, I, the book that I just recently published, um, at the end of October, it'd been in my brain to write this particular story, which is based off some of my past experiences. Um, I didn't really imagine what it was going to be like, although I do have to say that when I realized that people I knew were going to read the words I've written in this book, I started to panic for like a day, and then I got over it. That was a little hard. Um, where would you like to see it go in the future? I would like to finish the book that I'm writing, and then possibly one or two more books, and complete the story arc of this character. And then I have ideas for some other... Um, writing projects that I would like to accomplish in a different genre. Mm. Question number seven, The Night Before Christmas. What's your favorite book to read during the, to read during the holidays? I don't have an actual book that I like to read during a specific holiday time frame. Um, I have a few favorite books I like to read that I don't think I would ever get tired of reading. You know, like... Um, Flowers in the Attic by B.C. Andrews, which probably isn't the most happy book around. <laughs> um, I don't really know how to answer that one because I don't have a book that I like to read during the holidays. It's, I just pick a book that I like to read. I guess that's a horrible answer for that one. I'm sorry if anyone wants to watch this and see spectacular long-winded answers. <laughs> Let's see here. Um... Number eight, Christmas parties. What's your best advice for juggling writing with the busy holiday season? Um, so my plan this holiday season is to take time off. You don't need to stretch yourself out and worry about writing a ton of words every day around the holidays. It is okay to take time off. You need to have writing time, but also family time. So, you know, like, Thanksgiving and maybe the weekend of Thanksgiving take time off to be with family Christmas holidays take time off get yourself a couple extra days that you're going to be off for the month and it's okay that you don't write every single day of your life it is okay your book will get done number nine polar express what writing rituals do you use to transport yourself into the world of your book or mindset of your characters my book is based the book that i'm writing now is based in portland and so i just try to imagine what it was like when i was growing up there and spending time there so that way you can accurately like describe the scenery and what it smells like and sounds like and what the sidewalk feels like when you're walking down some not paved correctly streets. Um, I also will have to think back a little bit further because my character right now is in her last year or two of high school. So I am not in high school anymore, obviously. So it takes a little bit of time to figure out like what they would really be feeling and acting like and so sometimes what i do is i'll watch video i'll watch movie series of kids that of tv shows that are for young adults where they're based in high school so it kind of like helps me get back in that mindset so to speak i guess number 10 is and this is the last one sugar and spice and everything nice in the spirit of spreading kindness and cheer do you have a special shout out to someone who's been instrumental in your writing journey or someone who has really helped you along the way i have a few and i think i'll start off with so the first youtuber that i ever or also youtuber that i ever watched um that i ever like watched and binged the entire backlist of videos was Kate Kavanaugh and the video that I came across on hers was I tried to write like Stephen King I like Stephen King I like how he writes I like how he interviews I how like how he is with his 
fans, you know, answering questions very matter-of-factly. I read his On Writing by Stephen King book. Um, I don't write horror, but I, and then I've been all of hers, and then through her I found, um, The Courtney Project, and I think between King Kavanaugh, Courtney Project, and Natalia Lee, they helped, Natalia Lee, Natalia Lee, um, put out a lot of, like, uh, editing how-to videos, if you don't, if you are going to do it yourself, she had to see, there was this one video where she did, like, a, um, top 40 words edit out your novel, and I wrote those down, those were really helpful, I like how Courtney Project is very, uh, original, um, authentic in her way that she presents herself in her videos, she doesn't, she's not fake, she's very open, like, how she, answers any questions you have, and she's totally good at, like, responding to anything on Instagram. Um, more recently, I've been able to get to know Charlie, Abigail, and my, 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 my mind is a blank. So those, Charlie helped me, um, settle on, decide on a cover, and, um, Abigail, Ford. Yes. She um, helped me format my book using a program on her computer, so that was really nice of her. There's so many um, people that helped me, like, recently with, like, making sure that I feel more comfortable on screen, helping me with advice on, like, how like book blurbs and the title cover. I think the most important person in my life that helped me like realize I could do it is my husband. He's the one that told me one day, don't try to find different jobs since you quit yours just now. Stay home, homeschool the kids like you've been doing, but also work on that book you've been wanting to write. So I did, and I did. So those are the 10 questions. Or the ho 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 Christmas tech. Or the ho 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 tech. That's what it's called. I can't talk. Words are hard. Um, okay. Well, thank you for watching. And tomorrow I have something a little bit more better planned. More better. What? It's like I can't talk or something. Okay. Thanks again. Uh, and I'll see you in the comments. Bye.